your intuition that the strong AGI versus weak AGI type systems could be fundamentally different. Can you can you unpack that intuition a little bit? Why yeah, could be I, I, very think, I think there's multiple thresholds. Um, an example is the point at which a system has sufficient intelligence and situational awareness and understanding of human psychology that it would have the capability, the desire to do so, to fake being aligned. Like it knows what responses the humans are looking for and can compute the responses looking humans are looking for and give those responses without it necessarily being the case that it is sincere about that. Mm-hmm. You know, the it's a very understandable way for an intelligent being to act. Humans do it all the time. Imagine if your plan for, um, you know, achieving a good government is you're going to ask anyone who request to be dictator of the country um, if they're a good person. And if they say no, you don't let them be dictator. Now, the reason this doesn't work is that people can be smart enough to realize that the answer you're looking for is, yes, I'm a good person, and say that, even if they're not really good people. So the work of alignment might be qualitatively different above that threshold of intelligence, or beneath it, it doesn't. It doesn't have to be like a very sharp threshold, but you know, like there's the there's the point where you're like building a system that is not in some sense know you're out there, mm-hmm. and it's not in some sense smart enough to fake anything. And there's a point where the system is definitely that smart, and there are weird in between cases like GPT four, which. You know, like we have no insight into what's going on in there. And so we don't know to what extent there's like a thing that in some sense has learned what responses the reinforcement learning by human feedback is trying to entrain and is like calculating how to give that versus like aspects of it that naturally talk that way have been reinforced. Yeah. I I wonder if there could be measures of how manipulative a thing is. So I think of uh, Prince Mishkin character from uh, The Idiot by uh, Dostoevsky is this kind of perfectly purely naive character. I, I wonder if there's a spectrum between zero manipulation, transparent, naive, almost to the point of naiveness, to sort of deeply psychopathic, manipulative. And I wonder if it's possible to- I would avoid the term psychopathic. Like humans can be psychopaths and AI that was never, you know, like never had that stuff in the first place. It's not like a defective human, it's its own thing, but leaving that aside. Well, as a small aside, I wonder if what part of psychology, which has its flaws as a discipline already, could be mapped or expanded to include AI systems. That sounds like a dreadful mistake. Just like start over with AI systems. If they're imitating humans who have known psychiatric disorders, then sure, you may be able to predict it. Like if you, then sure, like if you ask it to behave in a psychotic fashion and it obligingly does so, then you may be able to predict its responses by using the theory of psychosis. But if you're just, yeah, like, no, like start over with... (laughs) Yeah, don't, I don't, don't, don't drag the psychology. I, don't, I, I just disagree with that. I mean, I, it's a it's a beautiful idea to start over, but I don't. I think fundamentally, the system is trained on human data, on language from the internet, and it's currently aligned with uh, RLHF, uh, reinforcement learning with human feedback. So humans are constantly in the loop of the training procedure. So it feels like, in some fundamental way, it is training what it means. To to think and speak like a human. So there, I mean, there must be aspects of psychology that are, that are mappable. Just like you said with consciousness, it's part of the text, so. It, I, I mean, there's the question no. of to what extent it is thereby being made more human-like versus to what extent an alien actress is learning to play human characters. I thought that's what I'm constantly trying to do when I interact with other humans is trying to fit in. <laughs> trying to play the, uh, a robot trying to play human characters. So I, I don't know how much of human interaction is trying to play a character versus being who you are. I don't, I don't the, really know what it means to be a social human. I do think that the, that 
those people who go through their whole lives wearing masks and never take it off because they don't know the internal mental motion for taking it off or think that the mask that they wear just is themselves. I think those people are closer to the masks that they wear than an alien from another planet would like learning how to predict the next word that every kind of human on the internet says. Mask is an interesting word, but if you're always wearing a mask in public and in private, aren't you the mask? Like, <laughs> I mean, I, I think that you are more than the mask. I think the mask is a slice through you. It may even be the slice that's in charge of you. Yeah. But if your self-image is of somebody who never gets angry or something, and yet your voice starts to tremble under certain circumstances, there's a thing that's inside you that the mask says isn't there. And that, like, even the mask you wear internally is, like, telling inside your own stream of consciousness is not there, and yet it is there. It's a perturbation on this little, on this slice through you. How beautifully did you put it? It's a slice through you. It may even be a slice that controls you. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna think about that for a while. <laughs> I mean, I, I personally, uh, I try to be really good to other human beings. I try to put love out there. I try to be the exact same person in public as I am in private. Uh, but it's a set of principles I operate under. I'm, I have a temper, I have an ego, I have flaws. How much of it, how much of I, how much of the subconscious am I aware? How much am I existing in this slice? And how much of that is who I am? Um, in, in this context of AI, the thing I present to the world and to myself in the private of my own mind when I look in the mirror, how much is that who I am? Similar with AI, the thing it presents in conversation, how much is that who it is? Because to me, if it sounds human, and it always sounds human, it awfully starts to become something like human. No, Unless there's an alien actress who is learning how to sound human, and it's getting good at it. Boy, to you that's a fundamental difference. That's a that's a really deeply important difference. If it looks the same, if it quacks like a duck, if it does all duck-like things, but it's an alien actress underneath, that's fundamentally different. If in fact there's a whole bunch of thought going on in there, which is very unlike human thought and is directed around like, okay, what would a human do over here? And well, first of all, I think it matters because there are, th there's, you know, like insides are real and do not match outsides. Like the inside of a, like the, a, a brick is not like a hollow shell containing only a surface. Mm -hmm. There's an inside of the brick. Yeah. If you like put it into an x-ray machine, you can see the inside of the brick. Um, and, you know, you know, just because we cannot understand what's going on inside GPT does not mean that that it is not there. A blank map does not correspond to a blank territory. I think it is like predictable with near certainty that if we knew what was going on inside GPT, or let's, let's say GPT-3 or, or even like GPT-2 to take one of the systems that like has actually been open sourced by this point, if I recall correctly, um, like if we knew what was actually going on there, there is no doubt in my mind that there are some things it's doing that are not exactly what a human does. If you train a thing that is not architected like a human to predict the next output that anybody on the internet would make, this does not get you this agglomeration of all the people on the internet that that like rotates the person you're looking for into place and then simulates that per and, the, and then like simulates the internal processes of that person one to one it like it is to some degree an alien actress it cannot possibly just be like a bunch of different people in there exactly like the people but how much of it is like learn how much of it is by gradient descent getting optimized to perform similar thoughts as humans think in order to predict human outputs versus 
being optimized to carefully consider how to play a role, how to like how humans work, predict the the actress, the predictor, that in a different way than humans do. Well, you know, that's the kind of question that with like 30 years of work by half the planet's physicists, we can maybe start to answer. You think so? So I think that's that difficult. So to get to I think you just gave it as an example that a strong AGI could be fundamentally different from a weak AGI because there now could be an alien actress in there that's manipulating. Well, there's a difference. So, so I think like even GP2 too probably has like a like very stupid fragments of alien actress in it. There's there's a difference between like the notion that the actress is somehow manipulative. Like for for example, GPT3, I'm guessing to whatever extent there's an alien actress in there versus like something that uh, that mistakenly believes it's a human, as it were. Well, well, not, well, you know, maybe not even being a person. Um. So, so, like the the question of like like prediction via alien actress cogitating versus prediction via being isomorphic to the thing predicted is a spectrum, and even to what and to whatever extent it's an alien actress, I'm not sure that there's like a whole person alien actress with like different goals from predicting the next step, being manipulative or anything like that. But yeah, isn't it, yeah, that might be GPT five. Or GPT-6 even. But that's the strong AGI you're concerned about. As an example, you're providing why we can't do research on AI alignment effectively on GPT-4 that would apply to GPT-6. It's it's one of a bunch of things that change at different points. I'm, I'm trying to get out ahead of the curve here, but you know, if you imagine what the textbook from the future would say, if we'd actually been able to study this for 50 years without killing ourselves and without transcending, and you like just imagine like a wormhole opens and a textbook from that impossible world falls out, yes. the textbook is not going to say, there is a single sharp threshold where everything changes. It's going to be like, of course, we know that like best practices for aligning these systems must like take into account the following like seven major thresholds of importance, which are passed at the following seven different points, yeah. is what the textbook is going to say. Uh, I asked this question of Sam Altman, which, if GPT th- is the thing that unlocks AGI, which version of GPT will be in the textbooks as the fundamental leap? And he said a similar thing, that it, it just seems to be a very linear thing. I don't think anyone, it, it, we won't know for a long time what was the, Big leap. The, the textbook isn't going to think. It isn't going to talk about big leaps because big leaps are the way you think when you have like a very simple model of a very simple scientific model of what's going on. Where it's just like all this stuff is there, or all this stuff is not there, or like there's a single quantity and it's like increasing linearly. It's, like the textbook would say like. Well, and then GPT-3 had like capability W, X, Y, and then GPT-4 had like capability Z1, Z2, and Z3. Like not in terms of what it can externally do, but in terms of like internal machinery that started to be present. It's just because we have no idea of what the internal machinery is that we are not already seeing like chunks of machinery appearing piece by piece as they no doubt have been. We just don't know what they are. But don't you think there could be whether you put in the category of Einstein with theory of relativity, so very concrete models of reality that are considered to be giant leaps in our understanding, or or someone like Sigmund Freud, or more kind of mushy theories of the human mind, don't you think we'll have big, potentially big leaps in understanding of that kind in, into the depths of these systems? Sure, but like humans having great leaps in their map, their understanding of the system is a very different concept from the system itself acquiring new chunks of machinery. So the rate at which it acquires that machinery might uh, accelerate faster than our understanding Oh, it's been like vastly exceeding the, yeah, the, the rate to which it's gaining capabilities is vastly over-racing our ability to understand what's going on in there. 